Okay, so got this three doodle start pin, and uh, after using a few sticks that came with it, uh, I grabbed some of our older sticks that we had had. We had gotten this tube full of blue sticks, and I believe they are the reason that it damaged both of our three doodler devices. So this one, uh, you can see it's got the blue on there, but it doesn't work anymore even if you crank it nothing goes through and this new one uh, also did not work well so um, after putting that blue stick in there it, it did a little bit of the blue stick and then all of a sudden everything is dead so um, the motor still works it, it tries to function but it can't push anything through the extruder head so what I've done is I've taken it apart and I wish I had shown you how I took it apart but I didn't. I'll show you now though. The first thing is this is mounted directly onto the motor like so and the motor is on the gearbox uh, like so. The circuit board is also mounted here as well. So the first thing that you do is you undo all of these clips here on the orange piece and you break it apart, it slides off, the circuit board comes loose, you can move that out of the way, unplugging things. The circuit board is still attached to the extruder head, so you still have to deal with that. Um, but then at least you get this uh, block here and I don't know that I had to, but I took that apart. I uh, just had a couple screws. Um, and then the extruder head itself is kind of attached here. And I believe this is where my problem actually is. So there is a tube uh, here that the extruder head attaches to right inside there. And the way you get that off is this little orange retaining ring. So you just pop it off of this base and that separates this out. And you can see there is a lot of junk in these gears, blue junk specifically. And then I had the extruder head itself. And so what I did was I gently unscrewed this white plastic piece and that comes out with a little Teflon tube and there's something stuck inside of it and I could pop that out pretty easily, actually. I'm gonna to try to clean that out of all the blue plastic that is getting stuck in there. So that is now clean. And then you can see this piece of blue material here. This is our problem. It will not come loose. And it doesn't get hot enough to melt it fully. So, uh, I am considering several options as to get rid of it. I considered using a hair dryer to try to heat this up gently um, because it's a very low temperature plastic. Uh, a hair dryer on high heat and high speed is like the hottest it can get and it kind of slowly could soak the heat into it and then maybe I can pull it out of there. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to work because I tested it on just a regular piece just directly and it took pretty direct heat in order for that to soften the plastic. Um, a heat gun I feel like would be a bit overkill um, but I think a slow heat is going to be the solution. So maybe I will use the hair dryer after all but when I do so I'm going to just put it on high heat but low fan and let as much heat as possible creep into this. And I'm also going to turn it on, uh, which is something that I did earlier. So plug this in here. You could plug this into here. So this is the actual heating element. These really skinny wires here are the thermistor that tells the board what the temperature is and I'm going to turn it on. It's red. It's heating up. 
I'm not going to try to extrude anything because I didn't even plug the motor in. The motor seems fine. All the teeth on the gears seem fine, though they are pretty disgusting looking. Um, I'll clean those up before I do it again. Alright, so this thing is heated up fully and just on a, of its own weight, this little plastic piece is in fact falling out of there. So now that I have removed that, I'm going to try to find something skinny that I can shove down in there and remove the rest of it. Now I will say that it's a low temperature plastic but that thing is still quite hot to touch with my fingers. So I'm going to gently hold it, gently hold it with some pliers here and try to find something could easily force through the tip and indeed it is starting to work now this material there we go once the black starts getting in there, it actually is a bit easier. So this material, that blue, seems to be like uh, when you get moisture issues with PLA. So I think that's the problem, but that's how you fix it. Uh, I'm going to clean these gears off with a Q-tip or something and then reassemble it. All right, so I have reassembled the gearbox and I'm gonna to try to put this thing back together in the reverse order. So uh, the board sits right here under this little lip there. And then these two plastic pieces kind of clamp around that and you'll notice they got a basically they form a tube and that tube should be aligned with this hole and that's where the filament actually goes in here so that's like your guide for the filament through the body of the uh, the handle and then on the other end we've got the actual hot end and this guide it looked like it had a little Teflon sleeve inside um, as do most 3D printers, uh, extruders, and so the Teflon sleeve goes toward the end where the screws are, and then you just screw that right back into place on the hot end. That worked well enough. And uh, what I've done is actually, uh, I've reassembled the whole thing. It's a bit of a mistake, because you cannot fit that in there, I don't believe. It's already put back together. So I'm going to just loosen this up. It's got these two little retaining clips, one on either side, and I might even need to unscrew it again to get it wide enough. Yes, I do. So this is a standard Phillips head on the gearbox. While they use a, uh, a triangle bit like old McDonald's toys, um, but getting this uh, little set here is perfect. You need a really tiny one. So taking the regular screws out, here they are, and that will give me the ability to pry these retaining clips off very gently. You don't want to break them. I'm going to remove this all together here. There's one side, and there's the other. And so, oh, the way that these gears fit in here, uh, this one has a hex shaft uh, molded in, into the metal gear, so that fits 
like so. And the other Metal Gear, I'm just going to clean off some of that excess plastic there, um, meshes there. And so the way this works is uh, as the, uh, the motor spins this gear, and this on the other end is attached to a worm gear inside here, and it turns this large gear, and that large gear then uh, gets reduced by the, here we go. So this turns, uh, is turned by the motor, right? So the motor turns this guy, this guy turns this guy. This one is attached to a worm gear, which turns this one. This one then turns this one the opposite direction, but the same speed, and uh, well, relatively because uh, these teeth and these teeth kind of have to go in the same speed. And you can see there's like some teeth in the middle there. That's what actually grips the plastic. Same with this. This top gear uh, just grips the plastic. This one down here is what actually engages. And those being the, uh, the things that deal with the most force are cast in a, a little metal. Uh, look like powdered metal. So um, this thing has a retaining uh, hex shape to it, and that clips on. And then this, uh, of course, of course, I forgot to put the ring on. So you put the ring on first, and then you slide it into place to keep all this tight. So, uh, the retaining ring has two sides, a flat side and then one with a little impression in it. So the impression is going to go on top of there. You stick this in place, align the motor shafts, and clamp. Oh. Yeah, so because that's a hex shaft, it does not spin. It needs to be aligned in just the right way. Then you place the little orange retainer ring on there. Then you can screw the motor back together. Here. And when you first open this, these screws are in there a little bit tight. So uh, be careful not to strip them. Uh, apply a, a pretty significant forward pressure to be able to loosen them. All right, so now we can take, and actually I just realized I did a bit of a mistake here. There is a clip where the wires go on this side of the motor's uh, gearbox. A little bit of strain relief there. So I had put it on the wrong side, the way that I've got this mounted, but I don't know if that will matter. So now I've got the board in place. So blue stuff out of the way. Uh, you want the motor pieces here to align uh, there's a little keyway right there at the bottom. Make sure that that aligns. And you want this, whenever you stick it in, to clasp the circuit board on the corner. So it's a little tough to hold it all in place that way. Uh, but once you get one in, the other one is a little easier. And once it's aligned, these pieces just clip together. There you go. 
Now we put the switch shield back on here. Make sure everything's still plugged on and turn it on. And I'm going to place this this way back in the the case and then this goes directly on notice that the, whenever you pry this apart don't break these little retaining pins here if you can help it um, now how am I going to get that to stay yeah those are the retaining wire slots right there and here so you kind of want this to follow this path to be out of the way of the plastic. So you retain that one there, and then it should retain it here as well. Keeping it out of the way. I just realized you may not have been able to see much of that. And it's back together, turns on. I'll screw this guy back together let it warm up for the test oh, I pushed the button so it, it turned the motor on I can feel it moving I can hear it moving and that means it's probably hot enough right now to extrude so let's Give it a shot. It's green and, and the plastic is feeding in. Let's see if it starts squirting out. I'm gonna clip this spot off. Hey hey, and it works.